All right, so I'm going to go over the lesson 2.3 notes real quick. Uh, and then in class, after you take the notes or watch this video, just um, go do the lesson check. So we have talked about what a normal distribution looks like uh, and what a left and right skewed distribution looks like. Um, and now these notes, we're not really going over anything new. It's just when to use what. So if you see a histogram and it is a normal or symmetric, remember normal and symmetric mean the same thing. So if it's a normal or symmetric histogram, the center we are going to use is the mean and the spread is standard deviation. So if the histogram is normal, we will use mean and standard deviation to describe the graph. If the distribution is left or right skewed, doesn't matter which one, um, but if it's skewed, we use median and IQR, okay? The special case is if you're comparing two distributions, one is skewed and one is normal, we revert back to median and IQR, okay? Uh, the special case is not really that important. Most of the time, that's only going to happen when we're coding in our studio. Um, so... We'll talk about that more next week when we code, but um, I do want that in your notes uh, in case it comes up. The big thing, I'm just going to say it again, for a normal distribution, when it asks you for the center and spread, it's asking you for the mean and standard deviation. In a skewed distribution, when it asks you for center and spread, it's talking about median and IQR. Okay. Now, here's why. I'm going to try to explain why, and this is the last slide, so this isn't a very long set of notes, but I'm going to try to explain why we don't always use mean um, and why we don't always use median. Uh, <coughs> okay. So you see this left skewed graph over here at the beginning where the mean is to the left of the median because in a distribution, uh, hopefully that air conditioner is not loud, it just fired up. Um, the mean is to the left because these extreme skewed values over here on the far left of the left skewed graph are pulling the mean towards them. Okay, so think about you're trying to do like, uh, I don't know, the average grade of a test, right? So you've got some 100s, some 90s, some 80s, and then you had three kids make a zero, right? So the teacher might say, well, the class average, the mean was a 72. Well, really, everybody in the class got an A, but these two goobers that got a zero are bringing the mean way, way down. Okay. So in a skewed distribution, the mean is drawn towards the skew because those extreme values are making the mean larger or smaller than the real average should be. So in a left skewed graph, the mean is on the far left because those extremely small values are forcing the average to be lower than it really is. In a right skewed graph, the extreme values are really, really large because they're on the right side of the graph. So if your extreme values are very large, your mean is going to be bigger than the average really should be. Okay, think about like, my ridiculous um, example that I normally use is about like, let's say I want to interview 100 Americans and I want to figure out what's the average salary of an American worker. OK, so I interview 99 normal people. Right. So I'm hearing 50,000, 100,000, 150,000, 70,000, 60,000, 30,000. Right. Normal numbers. But then walking down the street, I accidentally run into like Jeff Bezos or like Elon Musk. OK, so I interview all these people that are making you know, 50,000 to like 200,000, okay? Won't just be generous. Um, and then I actually run into a guy that makes like $200 billion a year, right? So if we add up 50,000 plus 100,000 plus 75,000 plus, you know, 200 billion, then I'm going to write an article that the mean salary for an American male or whatever is like $500 million. Well, that's, obviously incorrect, right? So um, the mean, if you have extreme values, they greatly affect 
the mean and they force the mean to be higher or lower than it truly the representative average should be okay why we use <clears throat> the median in a skewed data is because if we have these really really small and really really big numbers the way we find the median is we cross off the smallest and largest number right so by finding the median, we're eliminating the extreme values and ending up in the middle of the data. So if your data is skewed left or skewed right, the median will be a better representative average uh, than the mean. And I know mode is on this graph, but we don't care. Mode's just the biggest bar. Uh, but we don't really care about that, um, except in very special cases where you're asked for it directly. Um, technically, the third graph over there, that's the perfect bell shape uh, or a perfect mountain over there that's your <coughs> that's your normal or symmetric graph um, in your normal or symmetric graph the mean median and mode are all directly in the center so technically reporting the median wouldn't really matter but <coughs> we will get into this a lot more in unit three after we take exam two but most of our formulas are referring to a normal distribution because most data actually is normal, if you can believe it. Um, so most of these formulas require the mean and standard deviation. So if your graph is normal, so if your distribution is normal, we are going to report mean and median because the mean will be an accurate representative average, okay? But in a skewed, the mean is so skewed as well it's so off that we will not use mean standard deviation if it's skewed we're going to do median and iqr to try to account for those extreme values that occur in the data um, hopefully this helps that's all uh, for this set of notes so just know when they ask you that's what we need to do <clears throat>